Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Azuzin. Uh, so let's make a little bit of announcement and officially start the stream as usual, as usual. Uh, so we're going to do a red, a circle, uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at a television website? So today we're doing Windows development on Linux. That's right. Uh, today is going to be the legendary stream that I've never done before. I've never done anything like that before, uh, but we're going to do that. Right. So we're going to be doing a Windows development on Linux. So and I can hear you asking, but Zozin, why would you do a development for this niche operating system for video games and stuff like that? Well, I'll tell you, right. So I was working on my musualizer, right? So the thing uh, that we can visualize the music and produce high quality videos and stuff like that. In fact, I can show you how this entire shit looks like. It actually looks pretty cool. I'm super proud of this thing. In fact, I didn't know that I can produce such a cool looking results. Uh, right, this shit looks like it was created by an artist, but then I look back to it and I was who created it. It's just like so bizarre sometimes. Right, so I'm, I'm super proud of this thing. Uh, right, so looks how it, look how it looks like. So freaking awesome. And then you can press F and it will start rendering the video, right? It will take some time, so we're not going to do a full video, so I'm going to just close it right away. But yeah, so uh, if you want to watch how the final video looks like, uh, you can watch it on, um, you know, on the GitHub page, right? So you can watch it in here. So I'm going to copy paste the source code to this thing, uh, to the chat. And for people who are watching on YouTube, of course, it is going to be in the description as usual, as usual. So here it is. Uh, so um, I basically upload it to GitHub. I publish the source code and then weird comments start to roll in. Things like, but where is the Windows support? Zosian, when are you going to do a Windows port? So Windows, 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 Windows. So it's just like, who still uses this niche operating system for video games in 2023? And apparently, like, I didn't freaking know that. Apparently, there's like a huge community of people who still use that operating system. Like, holy fuck. And apparently, like, I, I have to actually port my programs to this weird operating system specifically designed for video games. Like, I, I don't know why people don't use like a real operating systems, right? Designed for real ser serious professional work. Why they're using operating system for silly video games? I do not understand. It's kind of weird to me, but I mean, I, I don't judge, right? I don't judge. If a lot of people chose this weird operating system for video games as the main operating system, so be it. So we'll have to port uh, our mutualizer to Windows as well. <laughs> So anyway, obviously I'm joking, right? So just a disclaimer, right? So th this is just a joke, right? Because I actually seen people take my stance on, you know, niche uh, operating system for video games too seriously. Like I'm obviously joking, right? I know it's the most used operating system on desktop. I know that, okay? I'm not that dumb. I'm not the smartest person on planet Earth, but I'm not that dumb, okay? Right. So anyway, uh, we need to have a Windows support, obviously, right? So because I want this application to be cross-platform and uh, we're using primarily cross-platform dependencies, so it should be relatively doable. Um, right, so the problem is I do not have Windows. Well, I do have Windows on this machine, actually. I have Windows 8, but uh, setting up as streaming um, things on that um, operating system is kind of pain in the ass. Look, I, did, I didn't, didn't want to spend time on that, so I decided uh, what if I just try to port it to Windows on Linux by cross-compiling using MinGW? You guys know what is a MinGW? So it's, a, it's actually a pretty cool project. Uh, MinGW is basically a port of GCC uh, that basically generates uh, Windows code. I, I don't know why it's source code, but there was an official website. Yeah, this one, I think. I think that's the official website of MinGW. So uh, it's an advancement of the original MinGW. Oh, so it's sort of like a MinGW2 electric boogaloo. Uh, well, well, that's an advancement for sure. <laughs> Just having a working website is already advancement of a previous version. I do agree with that. Anyway, so, uh, right. And essentially what they did, they ported GCC compiler to actually target Windows system. Right. 
So they now target Windows systems as well. And what's interesting is that this compiler, since it targets Windows system and generates like Windows code, uh, but it's original GCC, it can actually work on Linux as well. Right, so if you take a look at the downloads, you will see not only Windows, like MCs, I think MCs is sort of like a distribution that uh, comes with MinGW, but you also see a Linux. Right, so essentially, you can have a Windows compiler, Windows compiler, running on Linux. Right, so that's what you can do with MinGW. So sitting on Linux, you can write Windows code. You can literally do include Windows.h. Right, so you can literally do, let me show you, main.c. You can do include Windows.h. And then the famous, do you guys know this one? Win32, lin and min. You can do this kind of crazy Windows shit, right? This shit you usually do on the separating system for video games. And sitting on Linux, you can compile it for Windows. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's also, <laughs> I forgot about this, like for no min max. I, I don't know, do you just do define no min max? I don't rem remember how to define it, but I do remember. Uh, something about min max, right? That collides with the standard min max. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's a mess. Uh, Windows API is a mess. But to be fair, it is as much of a mess as POSIX. I feel like both POSIX and Win API, they're both mess, but they're mess in a different way. You know what I mean? Right. So. <laughs> They, they, they're both kind of messy, but slightly differently. Uh, right, and you can do like shit like that. Um, so, and you can compile it and you can produce actual PE executable on Linux. Do you guys know what is a PE? Uh, right, so there is such thing as PE and there is such thing as ADF. Right, PE stands for, I think it stands for portable executable, right? Uh, executable and elf stands for executable and linkable format right so both of these formats both of these formats they are designed for the same thing they are designed to hold the you know uh, native instructions for executing so ba basically they're format of the executable files that you run when you double click on them so the only difference between them is that pe is for windows right so it's a windows and elves is for linux in fact it's for any unix posix uh, and whatnot right so i think it, it's more it, it uh, since it's supported primarily by unixes it's more widespread than pe right but but in any case uh, pe is the windows executable format and elf is the linux unix posix executable format so as far as i know mac os and linux both use that format uh, so anyway, so and essentially, uh, you can take this program on Linux and by calling MinGW, you can produce PE executable, right? You can produce the PE executable. So, and uh, what I did, I actually installed MinGW and they, they actually come with the standard, um, in the standard repo of Debian. But the problem with MinGW is that all of its executable have, um, weird ass naming scheme that i can never fucking remember <laughs> right it is so fucking painful the, the thing i have to do i have to go to user bin all right and essentially do ls and grab a grab for min gw ah yes x86 64 w64 min, G, uh, min gw32 g plus yeah yeah th that one yeah so th this is the executable that you need to call <laughs> um <laughs> You see what I'm talking about? Right. So uh, essentially, well, let's give it a try. X, x86 64 um, W64 min G W32. Uh, a lot of numbers in here, as you can see. And I think we have to call GCC. Uh, right. There we go. So it acts like GCC uh, and it even says no input files and stuff like that. So let's actually try to uh, compile our application, our Windows application that include Windows DOS H and stuff like that with MinGW32. Okay. So it complains that uh, we didn't include STDIO. Okay. That's fine. We can include STDIO. Wait. Wait, 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 wait a freaking second. Linux. What? What the fuck is going on? The, the world is going fucking. Cr what the fuck? This is a. This, this should not be possible. This. 
This computer is haunted. It's possessed. It's <laughs> But in any case, look what it produced. Look what it produced. <laughs> now, let's go ahead and do a file on this shit. P.E. Fucking P.E. What the fuck? And if I try to run it, um, I can't run it because it's not a real Linux executable. But if this is a real Windows executable, I should be able to run it with Wine, right? So what if I do Wine? What the fuck? So, you own Linux. You can actually write like a real Windows application and produce real Windows executables with MinGW. <laughs> and if you want to test them, you can just use Wine. Who needs Windows for developing Windows? Am I right? Like, you don't even need Windows to develop for Windows anymore. Like, why the fuck do you need that? Like, you can just use MinGW plus Wine if you want to test your shit. That's simple as that. And that's exactly. What we're gonna do today? Are you guys ready? Are you motherfuckers ready? I, I don't even know if it's gonna work for Mutualizer, to be fair, right? So I don't know what the limits of this approach, right? <laughs> because obviously it is limited, right? So uh, I'm pretty sure there's some things that you cannot do in here, but I have a feeling that this is a pretty good bottom line. I have a feeling, I don't have a proof for that, evidence or anything like that, but I have a feeling that if your application works on such a shady platform as MinGW plus Wine, it will probably work on Windows, maybe? We don't really know. I don't know how, much, how many discrepancies there are between Windows and, and Wine and MinGW and stuff like that, but we can at least try, right? So, by the way, I'm not claiming that this is like more superior development environment than Windows or anything like that. Literally, the only reason I'm doing it like that is that I could not be bothered to set up Windows environment. Th that's literally the only reason. Like, I don't have like some, some hot take on Linux versus Windows. I literally don't give a shit. I hate all of the operating systems equally. Like, everything I say about like Windows uh, versus Linux is just a joke to piss people off. I personally don't give a fuck. Literally, the only reason why I'm doing it like that, I could not be fucking bothered to just set up Windows. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I just already had the Windows environment set up, I would just stream from Windows, but I just don't, don't want to fucking do that. <laughs> Right. So don't expect any hot takes on that shit from me, just like I'm too lazy. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. And but but that's not a very interesting Windows application. This is this is not a hello world of Windows. What would be a real hello world of Windows? Windows developers tell me. What is the real hello world of Windows of WinAP? Yes, yeah, instantly. Message box A, or just message box. I think we can just use a message box. Uh, right, so let's do a message box. Can we do a message box on Linux? Uh, right, so let me see, let me see. Uh, okay, so let's just literally call Windows message box instead of this Unix shy set. Imagine like programming for Unix in 2023. Ew. Ew, Unix, ew. Anyway, so if I remember correctly, this is the parent window. We don't really have a parent window. We have to say uh, like null in here, right? So we don't have that. So here we have to say hello world. And this is a caption, right? So for caption, let's say hi. And the type, if I remember correctly, what's your type? I think it's like buttons that gonna be available. Yeah, yeah, so whether it's gonna have okay, okay, cancel, yes, no, we, we don't really care about this stuff. So as far as now, we can just put zero in here. Uh, right, so, and it returns an error or whatnot, we can just like remove it. And because of that, we don't really need STDIO. So what if I try to compile this entire thing? I swear to God, this shit is cursed. Like, you are you are on Linux and you're doing this kind of shit and it just fucking works. It's fucking bizarre. Like, I can't, I can't get over it. Like, why does it work? Why does it work? And, okay, let's take a look main.exe who fucking needs windows who needs this niche operating system for video games 
look at me. Yeah, there is you. You have Windows. Like this is a message box. So the hello world, okay. You press okay, and it's just like there you go. <laughs> you can develop Windows application on Linux. Just just fine. Just use MinGW and run it with wine but to be fair like i literally have no idea if i just take this executable and copy it to windows machine will i be able to run it i literally have no idea maybe it won't work maybe the only environment that can work is wine uh that would be interesting is that a common case when there is some windows application that works only in wine but doesn't work on linux because usually it's the other way around, right? So it usually works on Windows, but doesn't work in Wine because Wine doesn't implement anything. How many situations there is like that? So I, I suppose from, from the chat, what I can see is that it's pretty rare, right? So it is in fact pretty rare. So yes, yes, yes. So for MinGW, MinGW is usually available on all of the like Linux distributions. Like you can just do apt install or whatever you use. You used like uh, Arch probably, right? So Pacman. Uh, right, so it's usually available and you should be able to create like a Windows executable and Wine is also available. So it's just like a pretty interesting sort of development environment, MinGW plus Wine. So, and I'm, I suppose I'm going to put all of these things in the description just in case for anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff, right? So this is MinGW uh, and Wine. Uh, I swear to God, I swear to God, I feel like um this development environment like wine in general is getting better and better and better and some point and at some point the uh, developers of wine are going to be better at windows development than microsoft itself and the microsoft will say well it would be cheaper to just like let those guys do all of this windows compatibility development and just turn windows operating system into the linux distro they may actually do that at some point. This is literally what they did with Internet Explorer, right? So within Internet Explorer, at some point they realized, oh, uh, like Google is much better at doing this kind of shit than us. So let's just like let Google do all of the uh, web engine stuff. And they replaced it with Edge, which is basically Chrome. At some point, they're going to realize that with operating system as well. They're going to say, oh, well, we're, we forgot how to develop operating system. Let's let the community do the thing and turn Windows into a Linux distribution. I can actually see that happening. So there is a lot of steps that go towards like things like WSL. They're slowly moving towards that. So I have a strange feeling, like, but I'm not going to make any claims, but I have a feeling that at some point it might happen. So because... Microsoft is slowly forgetting how to develop a rating system. They already forgot how to develop uh, web browsers. They, they, they know how to fucking do that. Like, they forgot that. And they actually admitted that. And they're slowly forgetting how to make a rating system. So... <laughs> uh, trillion dollar corporation, by the way. So anyway... Um, Essentially, what I want to achieve, right, um, at the end of this journey, um, I want um, Mutualizer to be actually just two executables on Windows. The first executable is going to be uh, Mutualizer, uh, Mutualizer.exe. And the second one is, is going to be FFmpeg, right? And essentially, on, on Windows, you would just like uh, double click Mutualizer, just uh, pop some music in there you would uh, press f to render the thing maybe we're gonna have a better ui maybe we're gonna have actual buttons on the screen but i need to think how we're gonna organize all that and it will run this entire thing as a separate process right it's gonna run this entire thing as a separate process and uh for windows we can just literally ship a zip archive uh jai compiler style um right that contains just these two executables uh, luckily ffmpeg is already compiled as a Windows executable, uh, I already downloaded that, by the way. So I think I think I copied it in here. Yeah, there we go. So uh, let me let me see. If you go to ffmpeg, uh, if you go to ffmpeg, uh, they have a download page, right? So, but the developers of ffmpeg don't compile it for Windows themselves. They actually rely on somebody else doing that. So, as far as I know, there's two providers for ffmpeg. I downloaded this one, uh, GN Dev. Right. So this is basically FFpeg for Windows, like binaries and stuff like that. And what's interesting is that they work really well, even on Wine. 
Yeah. So FFmpeg compiled for Windows works in Wine and it like converts videos and stuff like that. And it's just like actually pretty amazing, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, right, uh, FFmpeg binaries for Windows, right? So this is where I'm gonna copy paste uh, this entire stuff for anyone who's interested. So uh, yeah, here's, it is in the chat. So that's the technologies we're gonna be using. I'm actually really curious. So what if I just like unpack uh, this entire thing? So let me demonstrate you how good it is. Um, so the entire thing, the entire distribution here doesn't really contain much, right? If I just, def just do find, uh, there is a lot of like HTML documentation, right? So we can just skip that. There's some presets. I don't know what the fuck they are, but there is three executables in here, like ffprop that just prints information about the uh, audio or the video, ffmpeg, the, the converter, and ffplay is some sort of a player. I think I used it once. Uh, the cool feature of that player is that it shows the sound wave, right? So it's it's useful for that, right? But we only have FFmpeg in here. So, and we can literally just try to do wine FFmpeg and uh, does it work? Does it work? It, it does in fact work. So uh, it is very important for us. So it works in wine because we're going to be testing it uh, through wine as well, right? We're going to be tasting the whole sort of like a pipeline, uh, right? Somebody says wine OS. Uh, yeah, it is actually kind of cool. Um, wine feels like a small subsystem of Windows on your Linux machine. I, I'm going to tell, I'm going to show you, right? One of the things you can do with wine, you can do wine CMD. Guess what this thing does? <laughs> so you can go to C drive. Right, you can go to C drive. You have program files, program files x86. Uh, you have users and stuff like that, right? So you can go to users. Uh, so among the users, you have the streamer. Okay, so that's that's me, and you have my documents, my music, uh, application data, and stuff like that. So for instance, you want to do notepad uh, main.c, right? This is just wine. This is just what comes with wine. Right, so... So you can develop some programs in here. Uh, so, but what's interesting is that this notepad, I feel like they re-implemented it from scratch because obviously they cannot use whatever comes from the actual windows because that's like a copyright and stuff like that. So uh, for these kind of like components of the operating system, they re-implemented them themselves. And uh, furthermore, uh, you can do Explorer, right? And uh, it's their version of Explorer, right? So basically they implemented their own Explorer. I suppose they implemented these sort of like basic commands of Windows in case you want to run some uh, batch scripts that call to these commands and stuff like that, right? So that's probably why they implemented it, but they had to implement it from scratch, right? This doesn't look like a Windows Explorer at all, right? But it kind of like replaces it, right? So you can think of Wine as just like a, small subsystem of windows on linux it, it, it's kind of weird but it, it, it makes sense at the same time right so yeah it's, it's, it's interesting it's interesting right so uh right 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 so um yesu a yesu a yesu i think the time has come to actually try uh and at least try to compile um, Mutualizer with MinGW, right? Just to see where we can go from that, from, from there, right? So let's go to Mutualizer. Uh, and uh, so what we're going to do, let me find the, the compiler. So here is the compiler. So do I have a hot reloading uh, right now enabled? I think, I think I do have it, right? If I do echo hot reload, uh, it's going to say, yeah, yeah, so hot reloading is enabled. I want to disable hot reloading. So let me actually restart uh, this entire stuff. So I'm going to go to visualizer. Uh, if I do hot reload it, hot reload. Yeah. So you unset the variables in bash with unset, if I remember correctly, right? So hot reload. And if I do something like that, okay, so it's not set anymore. Uh, I can restart the Emacs. And if I try to run build.sh, uh, okay, it doesn't build DLL anymore, so it is not built in hot reloading mode, which is perfect, right? I'm super happy with that. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna comment out this specific line, 
right i'm going to comment out this specific line uh one of the things i'm going to do i'm going to replace clang with um you know x86 64 w64 min gw32 gcc yo i think i'm starting to remember uh right so we're going to provide exe uh we're only going to provide the c files <clears throat> and nothing else right so i want to just try to compile uh it like that and see where exactly it is going to fail so interestingly we provide the linux implementation of ffmpeg and linux implementation of ffmpeg actually uses a lot of linux specific things so it might not compile for windows but anyway uh let's just give it a try and see how it goes uh okay so it tries to uh like use ray leap um, we can provide the headers from, uh, for Rayleap. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, in fact, yeah, we can just like, we can just provide the flags and see how it's going to go. Right. So let's just provide the flags for Rayleap. Um, and there we go. So if the first thing it fails at is the Linux stuff, right? It's the Linux stuff. And this is literally why I want you to keep all of the Linux things in a separate translation unit. So, uh, the interface looks like this. But then I can have several implementations of, uh, of that interface, specifically this one is for Linux. And then we can easily create FFmpeg Windows, right? And just implement uh, all of these functions for Windows, right? And we, I kind of already do know how to implement this kind of stuff for Windows, because this is something that I already done before. I already, uh, I already created a separate process on Windows and then connected a pipe to it. This is something that I've done before, and I've done it in uh, no build project, right? So which is a building, uh, building tool for for C, right? So uh, it's some way here, right? If anyone is interested, I'm gonna actually copy paste it here in the chat and for people on YouTube, of course, it's gonna be in the descriptione, uh, in the descriptione. So if I take a look at no build edge. So um, there is a call to function create process in there. Uh, pro, um, I think I'm going crazy. Okay, so create process. So, and it's done in the context of running a separate process synchronously, right? And what's cool here is that uh, this function can accept opened files for standard input and standard output. And the way you do that on Windows is you actually fill this thing out in the start in for uh, structure, right? So they have fields for standard output, standard input, standard error, and you literally can just open a file and assign this thing there. And the new process is gonna use those open file descriptors as the streams for standard input and standard output. And that's way that way we can connect to FFmpeg on Windows. So we already have a knowledge on how to do that we already did a research right and it does work right because with this kind of thing we managed to pipe several commands together on windows right so we managed to pipe that so that should work with ffmpeg as well maybe if everything goes well we'll actually test that on today's stream we have a ffmpeg executable we can just create process we just can pipe some frames into it and see how it works and all of that through wine that would have been interesting i think right that would have been interesting but anyway, for now, I don't think I'm going to be uh, implementing on any of these functions. So the easiest thing I can do is just, you know, ignore them, right? I can return minus one saying that this, indicating that this thing is not implemented. So to avoid any uh, sort of unused, unused variable errors, I'm going to just do, do void, uh, void all of these variables. So FPS and sound file path. So maybe uh, one of the things I will have to do, I will have to do include std def. But I think if I just include ffmpeg h, yeah, this is something that should have been in ffmpeg h, I think, right? So in here, we just include ffmpeg h. So, and let's just go ahead and stub uh, the rest of the functions. So, oh, and by the way, um, maybe we'll have to replace what this function return because it makes sense on Linux to return int because that's the file descriptor, but we may have more complicated things on Windows. So maybe we're going to replace this integer with some sort of opaque pointer, opaque type, uh, or pointer to opaque type, right? So depending on the operating system, it's going to point to different kind of structure that hold different kind of, um, you know, native specific things, right? So that's usually what people do on like on different operating systems and stuff like that. Cross-platform cross development, cross-platform development. 
Uh, all right. So, and essentially now for Windows specifically, we're going to replace Linux with Windows. It's that simple, right? So, since we're building for for Windows, we're replacing that with Windows. Okay. You know what's weird? This motherfucker compiled. It didn't link, but it freaking compiled. I hate it. Why does? It... <laughs> So why, why did it just work? Well, I mean, yeah, so now we have to spend some time like figuring out how we can link with all of that, but it already compiled, right? It, it's already compiled. So I wonder if I just, so it can work with the headers that are on my Linux machine, but I'm pretty sure if I just provide libs, it's not gonna really link well. Yeah, right, right, right. So it cannot find like Raylib, uh, LGL, FW, and DL and stuff like that because like it's they are not in a format that can be linked for Windows application, right? So and this is where the actual problems start to to occur. But we can go ahead and maybe um, go to GitHub Ray San Raylib. Maybe Ray San actually creates like um, binaries for us for for windows we can yoink some of this stuff so let's take a look at relip uh that's a lot of text uh uh-huh uh -huh. okay so um we are doing uh, 64 bit application, right? So we're doing 64 bit application. Uh, as far as I know, in the Windows terminology, x86 64 is basically 64 bits. Uh, and I feel like 32 bits, right? 32 bits is actually i686. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's more, more like a Windows terminology. Do we want to build a 32 bit application? But by the way, how common 32 bit applications are on Windows? On Linux, they're basically the the thing of the past. They're basically a thing of the past. They don't, nobody actually uh, build them anymore. Uh, they are common, uncommon. So people are sending me like mixed signals. They are common. <laughs> okay, so there is, um, you know, the regular chatter, the regular chatter that says they are common. And there's a first time chatter instantly trying to debate me saying uncommon. Who do you think I'm going to trust more? Th thank you, by the way, Twitch, for actually creating this frame. Thank you so much. Uh, right, so classic chat. I can instantly see who's lying. I can instantly see. Uh, there are a lot still. Steam is still 32 bit. Really? Steam is still 32 bit? Oh, yeah. To be fair, like, if it was not a very common thing, I I'm pretty sure Ray Sun would have not provided 32 bit, uh, like, binaries, right? Uh, but since we're trying to be modern and stuff like that, we can try to um, to build, you know, 64-bit. So let's actually do all 64-bit. All right. Uh, so let me maybe move uh, this stuff. Move, uh, download, raylib uh, here. So what do we have inside? Let's look inside. It's pretty cool. So we have headers. So we don't even have to use our local headers. We can just use the headers from this thing. And we have, okay, that, that's pretty cool. So we have static things and we have dynamic things. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, all right, so let me try the following thing. So I'm gonna literally unpack it, right? So we're gonna put it in here. And one of the things I wanna try to do, what if I try to use the headers from uh, from that archive, right? So let's actually use the headers from that archive. So to do that, I think I'm gonna just copy paste uh, these things in here, right? So I'm gonna copy paste these things in here, and I'm gonna say include uh, this thing, and I think it's just include, right? So yeah, just include. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And let's remove these libs and see how it is going to build now. Okay, so the headers work, the headers do work. Uh, now, I'm going to do the following thing. I'm gonna do L, search for the libraries, uh, search for the libraries in lib, uh, and link with raylib. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Okay. Mm 
that is very interesting. That is very interesting. So, uh, time begin period. Time begin period. What is this function? Okay, we're entering the linker hell. The linker hell. So, oh yeah, I remember that on Windows, you are supposed to like link with things like user 32, GDI 32, kernel 69. Like you can't just build your application. You have to link with all of these like weird components of Windows and shit like that. And it's just like, uh, apparently Microsoft developers like get a kick out of you suffering with this kind of shit. So you have to kind of like, you know, um, you know, play by the rules. Um, oh, WinMM lib. I wonder if I mean GW actually like comes with this kind of stuff. Can I just do like a L uh, a WinMM, right? Can I do shit like that? I think I, I think I can. At least I didn't compile. So what if I provide some bullshit in here? Okay, you cannot provide bullshit in here. So this is literally something that exists in MinGW. Okay. Uh, and if you don't include this kind of thing, uh, what do you, you have this time end and begin period. And if you do include this entire thing, um, you don't have this shit anymore. You don't have this shit anymore. Okay. Uh, so, by the way, I remember that there was one person who been constantly uh, committing build scripts for MinGW. <laughs> Uh, right, so for, for all of my projects, and I really appreciate that. Unfortunately, I don't really have th that much time and resources to actually go through the pull request. But w w at the times when I did, there was one person who's been maintaining MinGW builds for all of my projects, and it was so fucking cool. Uh, if you're watching right now, thank you so much. It's, it's so freaking cool. Maybe we can steal some ideas from uh, their scripts, right? So one of the projects that still has that is like a dead. Uh, do you guys remember that? Right, it's this, it's this like epic, you know, text editor. Uh, right, so I'm, I'm gonna put the link to this thing in the description. Right, and it still has MinGW built. Uh, right, we can steal some ideas from there. Right, so the great artists, they steal. Um, oh, people do remember that, okay. <laughs> Uh, dramatic text editors. To be fair, that is one of those things that are really difficult to forget, right? Because it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool project. To be fair, a lot of people keep asking me to get back to the development of this thing. Um, I'll think about that. I'll think about that. Um, I don't know. I don't have a practical application for this text editor, uh, right? So it's great for memes. It is great for memes, but like, what's the practical application of this project? I don't freaking know. I don't freaking know, my man. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the script itself. So what does it do? What kind of libraries does it actually link with? So this one is supposed to be run from Windows, by the way, from Windows. But we are running our from Linux and testing everything on Windows. So in any case, both of these things are MinGW anyway, right? So MinGW is just like ours is compiled for Linux and theirs is compiled for Windows. But I suppose the flags should be pretty much the same. Um, they're not really doing anything particularly special. They're linking with things like OpenGL32. And this is something that we may want to do as well. Um, all right. Apart from that, nothing, nothing particularly special. So there is packages. Uh, so what is packages? It is used for libs. So interestingly, they use static. They use the flag static. Maybe this is one of the things that we have to do as well. To be fair, in all fairness, uh, it would be kind of cool if those two executables that I plan to ship um, on Windows, right, uh, Visualizer, NFF, and back, they were static. They were not depending on any external DLS or anything like that because, like, I want this thing to be like you just download this archive, unpack it, run it, and it just works. Like it should, like software should. Unfortunately, it does not in 2023, but this is how software used to work for a long time. Um, right. So maybe this is something that we want to do as well, just to do static. Uh, so let's just try to build that stuff. Uh, nah, doesn't. Right. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so we have this kind of thing, right? We have this kind of thing. So where can we find? imp w assert 
Do I have to include some special things for... But this is just an assert. Uh, so is there any libraries that we have to link with? Hmm. Do you guys know what kind of libraries? Um, LibMS uh, VCRT. Okay, maybe this is what we have to do. Um, LibMS VCRT. So let's give it a try. Okay. Nah, didn't solve it. So um, there's things like create swap buffers. This looks like GDI or something. This looks like GDI. Maybe we can just fix the GDI link, uh, linking problems. Yeah, win GDI. I vaguely remember this kind of stuff, right? So to be fair, like um, first, at first I was programming for Windows long time ago, right? So my first operating system was Windows and I even started programming when I was on Windows. So I did a little bit of a Win32 API development before I came to, to Linux. So I kind of vaguely remember that from my childhood, right? To me, this is not something particularly new. To me, this is more like a call to, to the past, right? So this is basically my childhood, right? <laughs> so uh, I'm, not, I'm no stranger to Win API. It's just like, for me, it was a very long time ago. <laughs> it was a very long time ago. So these days I grown up, I grew out of that niche operating system for video games. I'm an adult. I don't play video games anymore because video games are for children. So I'm using a serious business operator. <laughs> Joking, by the way, don't take me seriously, okay? I do play video games, by the way, even on Linux sometimes. So anyway, uh, right, so let me, let me see. Can we just li link with uh, LGDI32? Uh, okay, okay, that, that's, that's correct. Where is... This is this is something that pissed me off, honestly. Because this is just an assert. This is like, a, it's not really that important of a function. But where the fuck do I find it? <laughs> where the fuck do I find it? <laughs> Does anyone know where it is located? Can I just... Library for asserts. Yeah, 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 exactly. Library for asserts. I need to find it. Where is that? Ow! God damn it. Uh, Crates.io. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the pinnacle of Rust development. M my favorite one. This motherfucker has put error node to a separate library. <laughs> Freaking, they couldn't... You won't believe, like, I even found a lot of discussions on how to treat error no. They couldn't agree whether to put error no in libc package or not libc package because it looks out of place. Because in Rust you cannot have global variables. And because of that, you can only implement error no as set error no and get error no. Right. So yeah, so there is error no location, but from the from the name point of view, like how do you call that? If you don't call it just error no, that means it's not libc anymore. It's something inspired by libc, but not really libc. And there was like a huge like thousand comments discussion on how to treat all of that. And they finally decided where to put that eight byte locations of memory. They decided to put that eight byte locations of memory to a separate package. After thousands of comments of discussion, they finally agreed upon that. This is the pinnacle of Rust development. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and the same vibes I get from uh, from assert, right? So, it was like, where do we put assert? Is that a separate package? Is that a separate separate package? I don't freaking know. Uh, so <laughs> Cross platform interface to eight bytes of data exactly. <laughs> ah. Uh, anyway, whatever. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, yeah, this package is not small. This package is not small because also depending on the platform, you'd get this 8-byte location to memory differently, 
right so you get it differently so because of that there is a lot of code that tries to handle that and everything is just holy fucking shit mine for on the uh yeah <laughs> Fucking, fucking Unix, YZ, and Windows. Holy fuck. It's just a fucking miserable dude. I don't even look into that. Anyway, so... <clears throat> um, you know what? Fuck you, Leatherman. Fuck you. Anyways. <laughs> so, um, it seems to be working. We, we compile it. Why, why didn't we have to link with the of double? That's, that's a bit weird. Can I just do NM on this library? I can do NM. Like, wait, why the, why the fuck can I do NM? Ooh. This is a Windows static binary. Why can I use Linux bin utils on a Windows? Is that because of it's it's a GCC? Wait. Don't don't freaking tell me that GCC uses Linux formats for intermediate object bytecode. Really? <laughs> Does it? It it freaking does. It it literally uses like elf for intermediate object things. Holy <laughs> fuck! And that's why and then for me it just works. So, well, I mean, it's fucking cursed. But at the same time, can I? Uh, okay, so somebody suggests open it with AR. How do you do AR? I don't remember. Right, just a second. So do you do RX A? Okay. So that's objects that we got from there, right? Because dot A is basically compressed together all files. And if I take a look at the uh, at the file of this thing, cough object file Intel. I, mean, I don't know what is a cough object files. Is that the same as uh, you know? as whatever I get if I just do uh, gcc foo.c is that the same shice I get so if I just do file no it's elf so the different uh, right cough is windows okay so but why does it work with an m then that that's bizarre mine from the that's absolutely bizarre uh, it works with maybe nm just supports cough and then Linux cough uh, from object files. All right. They didn't really mention that. I guess they just support cough for whatever freaking reason. Uh, maybe it's, it was not that, that hard to implement. Maybe that's the point. Um, okay, whatever. Uh, sure, 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 sure. So let me just delete all of that. Okay. So what I want. Ah, oh, look at that. Rayleap literally includes JLFW. Does it include like OpenGL, uh, GL begin? It also includes... Rayson. My compliments to the chef. Like, seriously, what the fuck? Thank you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> With, yeah, thank you for including all of that into a single freaking library. Thank you so much. Okay, so... All right, because I was already prepared to download GLFW and stuff like that. It, it comes with that. Um, why doesn't it come with a cert? Oh, it does come with a cert. Wait a freaking second. But it's not W assert. What's the difference between W assert and just assert? Oh, it's U undefined. Ah, U is undefined, so you have to supply. So that means you also have to supply GL of W yourself. Fuck. 
fuck. Uh, so W is a white string on, on Linux. Oof, 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 oof. I, I can really sense with my ass the pain. Oof. Oh, that was a mistake. Ooh. Like, why did I go into that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so we have the executable. So let's try to run this motherfucker. Uh, I'm going to do wine uh, and we're going to do main eh? build mutualizer. This is not what I want. I want to do mutualizer exe. Did I, did I run the correct thing? What the fuck is this? <laughs> the fuck? Wait, can I <laughs> come do the shit? What the fuck? I must have, I must have run the Linux version, right? So I must have must have run the Linux version. I, this that co could not be it. Uh, build. Uh, wait, where's the like? I have, what the fuck is going on? If I press F, it went to a rendering video, but does it render the video? Ooh, this is very interesting. Oh, we don't check for... It doesn't run FFmpeg, but we don't check for the FFmpeg failure. So one of the things we can do... Wait a second. Uh, FFmpeg start rendering. We never check for that. One of the things we can do, plug ffmpeg, if it's less than zero, we have to maybe print something. We have to maybe print something. So essentially, maybe plug rendering error is going to be true. Uh, so we have a rendering, but then the rendering error. Uh, so it's kind of a dumb way of doing that. It's kind of a dumb way of doing that. But we can do something maybe different, just a second. What if I go to Windows? <laughs> I can do that. Right, win. Because that's going to be an ultimate test, whether I actually run in Windows version or not, right? Lin and min. Uh, and we can do the message box. Message box. Uh, null. Um, and we're going to say ffmpeg rendering is not implemented for Windows yet. Here is going to be error and uh, just like that, just like that. So that's going to be an ultimate test of whether we are running the correct version of this stuff. Uh, right, so let me uh, give it a try. Uh -huh. And... Why the fuck does it, it actually, okay, so, so, oh, this is because uh, the, this thing blocks the main loop, yeah, so, it, <laughs> it even behaves like a Windows, look at that, <laughs> it even behaves like Windows, holy shit, <sighs> what the fuck, <laughs> right, it blocks the event loop, right, it blocks the event loop, uh, right, and it keeps rendering the video because we don't really handle that error, we just, like, print. This is an actual Windows application. Holy fuck. Uh, all right. And we can try to take a look at this entire thing. 2.3 megabytes compared to... Well, but I mean, it, it includes everything, right? So it just like, you know, links everything. And uh, if we take a look at the file, it's uh, P32 uh, plus x86, 64 for mass Windows. Yep. Yep. It's too freaking easy. <laughs> we can already try to ship that so um yeah you know what uh that's pretty cool you know but we need to have support for ffm pack right so the next step is probably going to be trying to implement that idea of doing create process of ffm pack 
and establishing the pipe and stuff like that and see if we can do that on a smaller scale uh, specifically we can go to this example that we did on the previous stream like a render video in c with ffmpeg and just maybe extend it and add example that demonstrate how to do that on windows that would have been actually pretty cool uh this example by the way you can find this example on you know on on github so where it is uh, render oh, yeah here it is so i'm gonna copy paste in the chat for people on youtube it's in the description All right we can extend this example and um maybe at some point this could turn into a cross-platform library for running ffmpeg as a separate process for rendering your own animations and stuff like that that would have been cool right so instead of like messing with create processes and stuff like that you would just take this small little library and it's going to work on Linux. I, I'm pretty sure it will already work on Mac OS because it's just POSIX, right? We're using POSIX here. It will, it will work on Windows and like everything. Um, yeah, that would, be, would have been cool. So this started as a simple example, but it may turn into like an actual cross-platform library for just running, uh, running the FFmpeg as a child process and stuff like that. That would have been cool. Uh, Yesu, Yesu, Yesu. And we already have a FFpeg executable, so we should be able to just like run it uh, with create process. But before we do that, I think I need to make a small break, chat. I think we need a small break. I need to make a small break. I need to refill my cup of tea. Uh, right, and after the break, we're gonna continue doing all of that shicey. All right. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and see if we can actually run FFmpeg as a separate process, right? So let's go back to uh, this rendering video in C example, right? So we'll uh, already have FFmpeg in here. So let me take it here and maybe copy paste it on the same level as the, the project itself. So we have FFmpeg. Uh, let's confirm that it's working, right? So I, I want to make sure that it's working so it doesn't depend on any DLLs that are nearby or anything like that. It works by itself. Um, it would be kind of nice to have something like LDD, but for Windows. Is there something like that? Does anybody know? <laughs> uh, LDD for Windows. Uh, what is LDD for Windows? I remember I remember there was even like a, like a GUI application. I forgot the name of it. Uh, so, equivalent of Linux LDD on Windows. Dump bin. Dependency work. Yes, dependency work. Can we run it on in Wine? Okay, there is. Okay, so there is X sixty four. So let's actually don't roll sixty four. Um, I wonder. Yeah, as far as I know, like in Wine, in here, if you do Wine CMD, you have a CMD, right? The usual CMD, uh, and you have a C folder. If I remember correctly, um, the C folder located in dot Wine at home. Yeah, there we go. So drive C. So essentially, this is where it is located on Linux. Uh, so that folder in here, it is located in here. So it should be relatively straightforward to just copy some stuff, some stuff in here. I can uh, maybe just go to download and let me find uh depends and i'm gonna just copy it there and i might as well just unpack it god damn it okay so freaking z bomb those windows devs windows devs they never create like a separate inner folder like every time you unzip something it just like falls into your current folder jeez um all right so can i do app data I, it, I need to go back in here. Is there something like home? I, I think there was a home. Yeah, no file, no file. Anyway, so um, let me find. Uh, depends, okay. Depends. Can I now run? <laughs> Freaking reflexes. Oh, it's called user profile. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I keep forgetting how to use Windows, like because I don't use Windows daily, so I don't really know. Uh, right, depends. Uh, depends dot .xz Is it gonna work? I wonder Can I run it? So it complains about something uh, MF MFC 42 DLL is not found Oh, okay <laughs> Who uses MFC in 2023? Is that still a thing? Okay, we, we can't run it, unfortunately 
<laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, doesn't really matter that much. That will be interesting to look into the like dependencies and stuff like that. But yeah, so a lot of like Windows debugging tools can probably also work in Wine. Oh, yeah, anyway. So let's focus on the on the real stuff, on the actual things that we need to do. So let's create main dot um, windows, right? So main dot windows. Um, I'm gonna maybe include just windows dot uh, and it's interesting how I don't have to create win main. Does min gw automatically generates win main for you? Oh fuck. So that means that Mutualizer may have an additional, like a CMD window nearby it. Um, so min GW GUI applications. I think you have to provide some sort of a fax so it doesn't do that. Uh, I think there was something like that. Do you guys remember? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. X. Jesus, bro. Uh, I don't quite remember. But maybe an, oh, okay. So they create win like the entry point or, uh, themselves. It was something like that. Okay, whatever. So I, I can actually research that a little bit later. So it doesn't really matter. So far it works. Let's not solve problems that don't exist yet. Uh, okay, so let's go to no build and let's yoink um, a little bit of a code from there. So maybe I have no build locally no build no build dot h and let's find create process right so this is where we create pro holy shit <laughs> this is how much code you need to have to create a single process <laughs> first you need to uh, fill out the start info structure right then you have need to have a second structure called process info but you don't fill out anything there we just like zero it out and then we have to call create process uh, after that um, we have to close handle h thread. I don't really remember why the fuck we're doing that. Why this thing has h thread and h process? What's the difference? I don't remember. Um, but anyway, so that that's basically what we need to do in here. Uh, so I'm gonna copy paste literally like everything in here and just hope for the best. Uh, define win thirty two lean and mean, uh, and let's just go ahead and build it. So I'm going to do x86-64, w64, min w, gcc, o, main windows, main windows c. Let's compile it. Okay, so let's go through the completion errors. Uh, so here we are getting fd out. These are only needed for the pipes. So we're not going to do any pipes for now. So we're going to only use the standard input and st standard output. I feel like if you don't really use the standard handles you don't really have to do that uh, so if you just don't enable this flag and don't set any of these things i think it will just pick up the standard input output automatically but just in case i'm gonna still do that right just in case i'm gonna still do that because i vaguely remember what you have to put in here um right so this one has no concerns in here so and this is where we have to provide the command line right so here we can literally put uh, ffm pack uh, xz and that's it, right? That creates the process. That essentially creates the process. Um, so then we check whether it was successful or not. Then we close this. I didn't think, I didn't know why we have to close it in here. Uh, and here we essentially get the process itself. So it would be nice to know the definition of startup in four. Uh, can I take a look at the definition? Can I find it? Search for. Uh -huh. Start up and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's probably handle. Where, where is the process? Let me see it. Uh, H process. Where where is the PI? Oh, it's a process information dummy. Dumb dumb. Uh huh. So okay, process information structure. I feel like a real Windows developer to be fair. Like I'm using MSDN and I'm like with <laughs> like with a smart face. I'm looking through the documentation. Okay, so it's just process and for structure. Yes, yes, yes. Like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm a Windows developer. I'm a low-level Windows developer. I know how to make game engines. Yes, I I make a lot of money in a game development company. I know all of this stuff. None of you plebs know anything about. It. Yes, yes, yes. Windows API. <laughs> ah, so all of that is handled, right? So um, <clears throat> uh, it's gonna be until. <laughs> I just want to say that in here. Uh, and I need to wait on this thing, right? I need to wait on this thing. Uh, and I, if I remember correctly, um, so this is a cross-platform process starting in no build specifically. And it's actually kind of cool. So you see, if it's Windows, it uses that stuff, Windows craziness. If it's Linux, it uses like uh, the, the POSIX fork and, uh, you know, um, exec and everything like that. So there's also cross-platform, I think, wait. Uh, which waits on the process? Yeah, PID wait. Uh, right. And you see on Windows it does this Windows craziness, on Linux it does this, you know, Linux craziness. So in here we're actually waiting for the PID. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you're waiting for the PID and then you're checking like different results and stuff like that. And then we're taking the exit code and... Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So depending on the exit code, we can just like actually return uh, that exit code specifically. So that's pretty cool. I can copy paste that stuff in here as well. And uh, they're calling process speed. So that means I can just say, okay, this is speed then. Right, so this is everything that we need probably. Like we're creating a separate process and we're just starting it. It's probably not going to compile, so let's actually go to the compilation errors and stuff like that. Uh, panic. Oh, it's a, it's a no build specific function. So maybe instead of that, we're going to do f std error. So this is going to be error. And here we have CMD show. We don't really have to show the commands, so let's not do that. Let's get last error as string. Uh, and then here we're gonna just exit with uh, one. Okay. Uh, so the next compilation error. The next compilation error. So we need to include stdio. That's very cool. Uh, what else? Get last error as string. So do you have something like that? Um, okay, search. Wait. The fuck is this shit? So? Am I? Oh, I'm actually. Def Wait, is that a custom thing? Oh, I remember that. I stole it from the Stack Overflow. Okay. So what it does, it basically gets the message of the last error or something like that. Yeah, yeah so for, for the convenience. Uh, okay. So that's the additional thing we need to have in here. Uh, there we go. You won't believe how much pain and tears went into coming up with these pieces of code. Right. And that's literally why I'm copy-pasting them. Right. I don't want to go through the same, same hell again. Thank you very much. I already researched all of that. I put that knowledge into, into my project. And now every time I need to do that, I just grab and copy paste it. No, thank you very much. I don't want to go through that ever again. So <laughs> yes, this is how you create a separate process on Windows. Yes. Surprisingly, it was rather successful. I'm surprised that I managed to successfully do that. Um, so. Uh, what else do we have? Assert. Uh, okay, so let's include assert. I remember we had problems with assert though. Um, panic. Yet another panic. Okay, go. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, can I just do some epic shy select f print f std error then error and then uh, okay, whatever. Then just return one. But we should not forget to go through all of these things and just give them new line. Can your Vim do that? Can your Vim do that? Can your Vim do that? Okay, so we also have to <laughs> do that stuff. And a boom. Look at that. Look at that. So, theoretically, when I run this entire thing, um, it should... Oh, you, you can't just run it. Of course, I forgot. It should just uh, run if I'm... So we just run FFM back as a separate process. It doesn't do anything, right? But there we go. 
So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, pain and tears went to in went into researching how to start a separate process on on Windows, but it paid off. It actually paid off. And this is the reason why I don't remove any of these comments, because I believe these comments are important, right? Because they they contain the sources where I copy-pasted different things and stuff like that. So just like, I do not remove any of that in case I will need that in the future. Very, very important. Uh, so, uh, yes, so, yes, so, yes, so we can try to maybe convert something. But to convert something, we need to generate some sort of video. So let's literally generate a video using main role. Do we already have main role? Yeah, there we go. So let's generate the video um, with a regular FFmpeg. Uh, and if we take a look at the video, uh, it should be just like a bouncing ball, nothing special. So this is something that we've seen on the previous stream, right? Um, okay, so in that example, in that specific example, um, we can provide output MP4, like you have to do a minus I. And let's try to convert it to a different maybe container. Let's convert it to MKV, right? And see how it's gonna go. So let's recompile the Windows application, right? Everything seems to be compiled. And uh, let's run it. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We are running FFmpeg. Yeah, look at that. Built by MC2. We're not running Linux FFmpeg. We're literally running Windows FFmpeg from a Windows application that we compiled with MinGW and we're running with Wine. That's a lot of layers of abstraction to unpack, to be fair. And the fact that it works is freaking surprising. Um, so, <laughs> fuck. so, wait a second. Can we take a look at the... Okay, here's MKV. And yeah, MKV works, right? Windows development on Linux. Windows development on Linux. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, so, why it was improved a lot in the last decade? Yeah, you can even feel that. You can even feel that. And it doesn't really have the latest wine, to be honest. Um, but even the old wine that comes with my old ass operating system is still pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> so, at some point, I'm telling you, it's going to get so good. The Microsoft will finally realize, oh, we, we can't really develop this kind of shit anymore. Let's let those guys to continue maintaining and developing it. Um, all right. So it's interesting. Can they just like use the Windows version of FFmpeg as a daily driver instead of my Linux FFmpeg in case my Linux FFmpeg doesn't support something? That sounds like an interesting idea, actually. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <clears throat> so maybe there's some codec that my version does not support. And it doesn't work that slow, to be fair, right? Because it's not emulated, right? So because Wine doesn't emulate anything, it literally re-implements the, uh, the abstraction layer. <clears throat> uh, so, um, Okay, so I already copy-pasted this sort of like abstraction with FFM back and stuff like that. I copy-pasted it from Usualizer. Uh, what I'm thinking is that <clears throat> we need to create an opaque type for the uh, for the PID and stuff like that. Because in case of the in case of the Windows, I suppose, um, it's just not gonna work that well. It's just not gonna work that well because you have handle and handle can you yeah it's kind of difficult so it would be better to maybe have something like type def void ffmpeg and essentially instead of returning integer you return a pointer to ffmpeg but since it's void like the the user of this library doesn't know what it's referring to it's opaque right so this is how you create opaque type encapsulation encapsulation this is how encapsulation work and every time you need to send a frame to ffmpeg you're actually sending it through ffmpeg ffmpeg right and when you need to end rendering you end in it in here uh, like so so essentially it's the in, uh, the actual representation is hiding from you handle is also just a void star says somebody in the chat true but we may want to keep track not only of the 
process handle, we may keep track also of the pipe through which you're sending things. You need to keep track two things. So it would be better to just like have uh, an opaque thing in my opinion. I think it would be better to have an opaque thing. Uh, and even for for Linux, it would be nice to to track PID. Right now in Linux, we do not track PID. Uh, so and essentially what we do when we want to end the rendering, we just do wait null, which waits for a change of the status of any of the children, which works fine for this example because you only have one child. But if you're going to use that in a bigger application, you may have several children, right? It would be nice to at least provide a point to like who you're waiting for specifically. I don't remember which wait. There is one of the waits. There are several versions of this function that accepts the bit, like the child which you monitor. So it would be nice to have that here as well. So that means like the structure that keeps track of a having back state may become more complicated in the future. So I think it makes sense to introduce that opaque type just for like a future proof situation. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I think you know what I'm talking about, mine friend. So let's go and do that. Let's go and do that. Enough talk. Let's freaking implement this shit. Oh, oh. <clears throat> so I wonder how, what would be the best way to do that? We don't really have to even include the FFM back here, so that's fine. Uh, since I'm not including the actual header in here, right? So I can create an internal FFM back like this. So and in here, we're going to have PID and pipe. Right, so PID and pipe. So, and in here, we're going to be returning FFmpeg. Here, we're going to be accepting FFmpeg, which is a pointer. Here, we're also accepting FFmpeg. And here, we also going to be accepting FFmpeg, FFmpeg. Boom. So, let's go and try to compile this entire thing. Uh, right, we need to do Windows, uh, Linux compilation, right? <laughs> so, you have to be careful. Uh, I have Windows and Linux, separate two separate things, so I'm compiling Linux right now. Uh, all right, so there we go. This is what I'm talking about. So this is the user code. Uh, we do it like that. Look, look how nice it looks like. It almost feels like F open. You know what I'm talking about? F open, right. It also has this opaque file type, uh, right, and you return a pointer. You're not supposed to look into it. I'm not sure if it's also defined as void, maybe not, but it acts like a void type, right? So it's opaque. You're not supposed to look into it. It's an abstract thing. OP encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, all these good things that everyone must debate to. Yes, yes, we, we are using them. Uh, so our code is clean. Our code is clean, trust me, Kappa. So here we have minus, oh, because of that, we have to return null in here in case of an error. Okay, so that makes sense. So now we return the point. So it's a completely different convention. Um, interestingly, so here we are creating a pipe inside of the child. Well, no, 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 we're creating it inside of the parent because child is zero. No, it is a child. So I feel like this one should do exit one. Yeah. If child is equal to zero, that means we are in the child process. We are in the child process. So, and if we couldn't attach the pipe to the standard input, I think it's not enough to do just return because it's going to return out of the function. It's going to like behave kind of weirdly. We have to crash the whole process with exit one. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So in kind of similarly, yeah, we have to crash here as well. Right, and this one is unreachable, so that's fine. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at that. So exit one. Uh, is that because I don't have stdlib? Apparently, I don't have stdlib. Look at that. Uh, I don't have stdlib. What else? Pipefd. Right, so from this function, I do not return pipefd anymore. I return this structure, but point it to this structure. So that means we need to allocate it preferably on a heap. Right, it's going to be easier to handle this way. So let's do malloc size of ffmpeg, uh, right, and then we do ffmpeg pointer to ffmpeg. And in here, we're going to have pid, uh, which is child, right, so this is the child ffmpeg pipe, uh, is going to be this pipe in here. And then we just return ffmpeg, just return ffmpeg. And of course, malloc can fail. Malloc can fail, but it, it will only fail in one case only one case if you're poor 
and don't have any money to buy more RAM. That's that's the only reason why it would fail, right? If it's equal, uh, it's not equal to null. And in that case, buy more more RAM. Lol. There we go. So. <laughs> malloc is the best indication if you're poor right if it returns null that means you're poor you don't have enough ram just buy more ram just stop being poor it's that fucking simple that's the best uh, way to handle this kind of situation mm -mm. all right so let's go uh to the extra compilation errors so this is the end uh, here we are closing the pipe and then we're waiting on anything but I think wait doesn't accept uh, wait doesn't accept the p yeah it doesn't accept the pit it waits for the change of the status of any uh, of the of the children so I suppose maybe we can do wait pid but what kind of options do you have to provide uh, so means wait for any child process whose process group id is equal to that of the calling process uh is that really oh it's a pid but where is the options uh, uh -huh. the value of options is or zero or more is an or of zero or more of the following uh, constants uh, return immediately if no children has exited and traced can i just like put zero in here i feel like i can just put zero in here like, I don't want to fuck with the options, to be fair, right now. I'm too tired. I'm too EP today for that. So I can do uh, ffmpeg pid. Uh, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Uh, and a boom. A boom. There we go. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And we have two uh, ffmpegs for sending frames. Um, you know, the, the regular one that just sends the frame and the one that is flipped. It is needed for situations like with Raylib. Uh, right, because in Raylib, when we get the pixels out of the render texture, it is flipped, so we have to flip it while sending. Luckily, somebody on in the YouTube comments uh, in the previous session actually said there, that in ffmpeg, there is a flag, uh, I wonder if we can find it, which is v flip i can't find it right so just a second uh i hope it was not gpt model that confabulated this kind of flag <laughs> because it might have been uh limited out uh right flip i'm pretty sure it was the gpt model that confabulated that flag specifically <laughs> uh ffmpeg flip vertically uh v flip maybe maybe how can I rotate video? Well, I mean, not rotate. Do you know the difference between flipping and rotating? Jesus. The age of AI, everyone. Um, so there's an H flip and V. Okay, so there is such thing. Uh, all right. Okay, so there is a V flip. So we can use something like that instead of uh, flipping ourselves. And maybe this is something that we're going to employ in the future, but I could not be bothered to do it right now, <laughs> right? So this is just something that I wanted to mention that it's it's better to probably do that on the level of FMPEG. Just send whatever you have to FMPEG and let it process all of that. Um, okay, so here we do FFMPEG pipe. So we send that to a pipe and this here is a FFMPEG pipe. So by the way, all these operations can also fail and we probably want to handle that as well. All right. Uh, so, which is probably worth creating some sort of a to-do, which worth creating some sort of a to-do. So first to-do I would like to create is the one for um, the ffmpeg to-do. Use vflip of ffmpeg instead. Uh, also uh, handle potential error that may happen in all of the ffmpeg. Uh, functions right because right now they return void kind of insinuating that they may not fail but they may fail right and they probably will fail uh, especially if you just run ffmpeg and like forcefully kill the chat ffmpeg process we literally ca cannot handle that situation but it may happen for whatever reason so i think the the main application should be able to handle that somehow right at least stop sending frames and just like say the child process has died f Mm -mm. so okay 
uh, let's go to to here and does it compile i think uh, i think everything should compile now okay that's pretty cool so now uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to compile the windows part All right and yeah I need to start developing all of that thing. So ffmpeg windows.c. All right. And for windows.c, uh, we're going to just implement all of these things in here. But the implementation of the ffmpeg structure is going to be completely different. Uh, it is going to have H process uh, and probably pipe like this. So, and uh, according to the notation, we have to do H pipe, right? So we have H process and H pipe. Uh, so that's how we're going to be doing all of that. Okay. So here we're going to be returning no for now. Uh, we're going to handle that. Okay. So here we should start the process. So let's go to Windows. Mm -hmm. And starting the process is as simple as this. <laughs> right, we all know that. We all actually know that. So this is going to be the PID. Uh, and I'm going to copy it up until the PID. Uh, so in here, I suppose, what I'll have to do is just do ffmpeg. Um, malloc size of ffmpeg by the way on windows you're not supposed to use malloc right so winapi has its own like memory allocation things um but i don't know them so i'm gonna fix that later <laughs> right. uh use windows specific allocation stuff right so i heard i heard that it's generally bad idea to depend on libc in your windows applications and essentially winapi has everything that libc provides and libc implementation for windows is just like a very shitty and stuff like that so you kind of want to avoid that uh portability layer issues yeah i, I don't know but since it's convenient right now i'm gonna just like stick to it all right and we can maybe fix that later when i feel like it when somebody actually complains <laughs> Right. Uh, okay, so this is a third, and essentially what I'm gonna do is ffmpeg h process, right? So I just copy this h process in here, but I don't have a pipe, right? I don't have a pipe. Uh, and as far as I know, we are creating pipe in no build as well. So there was something for creating, yeah. So for example, there's a cross platform function make pipe. And on Windows, it does this, right? So there's literally a function create pipe. And yeah, that, that's basically, it's actually very straightforward. Look at it. It's as simple as that. Hmm. Okay. So maybe that's what we can do. Essentially, essentially, essentially. So if I turn back Windows. Uh, but we have to create that pipe before we create the process. Right, uh, because we're going to be sending that pipe as the standard input, as the standard input. So, and I also want to preserve that pipe. Uh, so that means I need to create this particular structure that we're going to be returning first. Right, so I'm creating this uh, structure first, and then I'm creating a pipe, uh, but I'm creating a read pipe. Do, what pipe do we need? Do we need a write pipe or read pipe? I don't quite remember. I feel like we need both of them, right? I feel like we need both because one we're going to be using for the child process and another one we're going to be... Yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah, this one is very interesting. So let, let me see. Let me see the wording of uh, creating the pipe. <laughs> so... Um... file handling uh, okay they really don't want you to use this function i swear to god they really don't want you to use it they really don't want you to use it 
uh, so pointer to a variable that receives the read handle of the pipe. So that means you're supposed to read from that handle, uh, which means that this is something that we're gonna pass to the child, pass to the child. So, okay, let's create two things here, handle um, pipe read and pipe write uh, peep, right. pipe read and pipe write. So, and I suppose pipe read is going to go to here, pipe read, so this is the input. And pipe write is gonna go into this structure. And since, yeah, since I don't have to do it like that, I may actually give it a little bit later. So let's actually do it here. So in the pipe, this is gonna be pipe write. There we go. Mm, yep, I think that's it. I think that is actually it. Uh, so that's, that's how we're gonna be doing all that. That is how we're gonna be doing all that. So sending a frame, sending a flip frame, I don't really know how to do that yet, but can you write into handle or write so windows uh win api write to handle how do you write to handle uh write file i suppose that's just write file uh do you have to flash it or anything like that um, mm -mm -mm -mm. so yeah i guess it's a write write file uh let's I'm gonna just like copy paste it in here, but I'm not gonna use it yet because I want to implement end rendering. And when we're ending the rendering, we're just waiting for the PIDs and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're waiting for the for the object uh, and close the handle and let me just copy paste it in here. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So now here's an interesting point we don't really need a separate source code for windows example we don't really need a separate source code we can just use main row right we can just use main row and use the ffmpeg stuff because basically windows stuff is abstracted away right so the same code this same code should now work on windows we just have to link it with a different thing you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, actually. So, um, let me get rid of the main windows, right? And this executable. So then I'm gonna do min gw, and this one is gonna be main row win. Uh, we are gonna be supplying main row.c, main row.c. But on top of that, instead of supplying ffmpeg Linux, we're supplying ffmpeg Windows. And that should automatically works. At least that's the goal. At least that's the goal. So let's go ahead and do that. So if, of course it's gonna fail and everything. Uh, and okay, so we have some Linux specific stuff left. So this is something that we have to remove, right? So it should not be here. Uh, that's for sure. What else do we have in here? Okay, so we are in the Windows specific stuff. So that means we have to include Windows.h and define win32 lin and min. Uh, okay, so the rest of the compilation errors, so some typing errors, nothing special, panic. Okay, that's fine. So here, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just do fprintf, std error, so this is error, get last error, as okay, so I think I removed this thing. Uh, let me grab this kind of stuff from no build, uh, where it is located, so I should bring it back. Uh, maybe even make it static so it basically just optimizes the stuff or whatever uh, and uh, let's compile it one more time a printf so let's include uh, stdio okay so uh, get last okay so this one probably has to be visible in all of the places where we use it so i'm going to define it on top in here it's not going to be visible outside of the translation unit uh, right so okay so assert, let's include assert. Uh, let's include assert, and what else do we have? So yeah, in case of an error, we return one in this code, but now since we're returning the um, you know, pointers, we don't have to do that. What else do we have? So pipe, it's called hpipe. I renamed it to hpipe to follow the convention and stuff like that. So here, ffmpeg uh, hprocess, 
uh, H process and what else do we have? So this is null. So it's kind of all over the place. Uh, I don't really like that. Uh, that and back H process. So this is exit status. Uh -huh. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm just like following the compilation errors. Okay, so ending, yeah, this one is interesting. So ending the rendering can also fail, but we don't have a way to uh, report that stuff. Right, so maybe, but since I have it to do, so it doesn't really matter. I'll get to properly reporting errors out of this function later. Uh -huh. Okay, so in this one is ffmpeg uh, h process. Boom. Okay, so we have a Windows implementation of this small ffmpeg library. Uh, right, and I didn't even do anything super complicated. I was just following compilation errors. <laughs> so I just copy pasted a bunch of chunks of code that I researched a long time ago, and I literally duct taped them together until there is no more compilation errors and uh, good to go. Ship it. That's how software development is done in 2023, everyone. What? Unit tests? Continuous? What, what the fuck are you talking? Continuous integration? What the fuck is unit test continuous integration? You just like duct tape it until it, it compiles and you just ship it. That's it. It's as simple as that, my friend. It's that simple as that. Because if it compiles, say the line chat, say the line. If it compiles, it works. That's right. That's what being a statically typed language means. Right. None of that JavaScript bullshit. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we got the executable, so we have a main role. I have a feeling that it's not going to work first try, but we, we're going to try it anyway. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and do wine main row. First of all, let's remove all of the videos just to confirm that it actually produces the video. Uh, and let's do wine main row uh, win exe. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, opening input. Opening input file output mp4. Oh, I know what is going on. Yeah, of course. So it kind of worked, by the way, believe it or not, it kind of worked. But uh, I didn't provide the correct command line arguments in here. Right, so it's just like, yeah. So you have to provide... Um, this kind of command line arguments right so and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass because on linux these command line arguments are separate arguments that you pass to a function on freaking windows it's a single string literal and of course it probably has some sort of like a syntax. Maybe there is a way to pass it as an array because there's a lot of arguments in here. So let me actually check it out. Uh, right, let me let me check it out. Uh, Win API. Uh, process A. So command line, it's a single string. No, there is no argument. So you literally have to uh, pass like a string in here. And that means that it has some sort of a syntax. And what's the syntax does it have? Does it process double quotes or something like that? So, right. But what if the file name that you supply contains double quotes? Yikes. Ew. Oof. Anyway, so maybe there is a way to do that more robustly. Um, edge case is probably, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Oof, 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 oof. Is there like a class of attacks of injecting command line arguments through the create process or something like that? I'm pretty sure there should be some sort of class of attacks. Mm -mm. This string is directly passed to the process you're calling and it's up to the receiving process to part. I do not believe it. I refuse to believe this shit. Wait, wait a second. What's the signature of, of win main? Signature. <laughs> wait a second. Please don't tell me that it's... So you, you were not joking, right? So you... 
you, you were not joking. <laughs> WSTR. So WSTR is something else. What is WSTR though? Um, why Microsoft is booing me this hard? Um, it's a so it's it's several. Uh, it's a white string, but I mean it's a single string nonetheless. So and that's what's important. It's a st single string nonetheless. <sighs> Anyways, um, so how can we quickly do all of that? How can we click quickly do all of that? We can try to copy paste all of these arguments. Then we can try to get rid of the maybe commas. And since this is C, we can just merge them like that. And for the most part, this is going to be considered a single string literal, right? Except for the resolution and frame rate, right? Except for the resolution and the frame rate. But for the resolution and the frame rate, we can just put them as S. Right, we can just put them as S, and we can try to do some sort of like a SN printf. Um, so we can have some sort of like a CMD buffer, uh, which is going to be um, one kilobyte. One kilobyte is, is going to be enough for everybody, right? So something like this. Uh, let's make it two kilo, uh, kilobytes. Sure, why not? I'm feeling spicy today. Uh, all right, and. Um, what uh, it doesn't even have to be as it could be zoo uh, so this is the resolution so that means it has to be double zoo so it's zooks oh, yeah this is the famous cog sucker machine uh all right so and uh, where's the other s so the frame rate has to be just this and we can just pass width, height, and FPS there, right? So it's going to be width, height, and FPS. Uh, FPS. So that's it. And we can pass CMD buffer in here. Because think, two kilobytes is going to be enough for this thing. Man. So two kilobytes on the stack is a good idea, right? In 2023. It's, it's a good idea. But I mean, we're doing that for Windows, so we don't care. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so let me try to... Ah, this is not what I wanted. Uh, uh. Did, it, did it abort? I can't abort this shy, so what the fuck? Uh, can I... So, grab wine. Kill. Oof, oof. It doesn't stop. Uh, if I kill. Yeah. Oof. But maybe that's what you're supposed to have in here. Uh, I think it's... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> this shit is hanging. So people say wine server minus K to kill everything. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you so much. I don't know what the fuck has happened, but I mean, oof, that is scary. I'm not gonna lie. What I wanted to do, I just wanted to compile this shit. Okay, so it seems to be compiled, and I'm I'm super happy, super happy. Uh, all right. So let me try to run this thing now. Could not. Okay. Uh, the program main row has encountered a serious problem and needs to close. We're sorry for the inconvenience. This can be caused by a problem in the. Okay. So what does it mean? Does it mean that uh, it's a sec fold, right? So it's sec folded. Uh, so the buffer was not enough, uh, right? So the buffer was not enough to, to do that. Uh, Windows, right. I wonder if this is because, so it didn't even print anything yeah, could not create child process file not found. Ooh, this one is interesting. <gasps> because none of that shit is separated by spaces, of course. Okay, we can do a simple trick. Just replace this thing 
with a single space. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, motherfucker, motherfucker. Okay, so let's rebuild that one more time. Uh, and uh, so we'll just try to do that. Boom, boom. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, error opening input file dash. So, oof. Oof. So maybe you have to do that slightly differently. Maybe you have to indicate um, directly pipe or something. I remember um, ffmpeg read input from pipe. There was a special syntax for pipes in shite. Uh, pipe input to ffmpeg. Yeah, yeah, pipe zero or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so input pipe. So, but they omit the handler. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's literally try pipe then. So this is gonna be in uh -huh, pipe. Okay, again, and boom. Okay. Uh, error reading file pipe. Uh, pipe zero. Okay, let's give a try. Pipe zero. I wonder if it like Windows FFmpeg doesn't support this kind of stuff. I wonder if Windows FFmpeg doesn't support this kind of stuff. Uh, but we're getting closer, hopefully. Yeah, it, it cannot invalid arguments, so it cannot open any of that stuff. That's actually kind of soggy. Mm -mm. So, um, enable to read ZU. Oh, wait, that's a good point. So, does it say... <gasps> so, are you telling... Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, so it was, somebody said that in the chat. Uh, thank you. So that means, but there, huh. All right, so ZU essentially um, the thing for size T, right? It's a, a special thing for size T. We can replace it with D, of course, but the problem is that D is signed and size T is unsigned. So yeah, yeah, let's just do that. No, not a big video. Um, yeah, this is, ah, fuck. Wine server K. Okay. So essentially, if you run this thing and control C, it's gonna stuck. <laughs> and you'll have to do wine server minus K for whatever reason. Uh, you, you can't just, you can just stop it. Dude, it feels literally like Windows. Because on Windows, if you started some process of processing something, you can't easily stop that shit. Wine is just like Windows. Holy fuck. <laughs> it inherited that windowness. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you can't just stop anything, right? So you can't just press cancel. It's not going to work. Um, it's basically Windows. Um, anyway, so let's just give it a try. Yo, what the fuck? Is it going to do shit? Wait, it is doing shit. I didn't see output in here, but it's kind of stuck. Yeah. One server minus key. So it kind of, yeah, all right, all right, all right. So that's already progress, right? It's stalling, but so pipe, let's put dash back. Let's put the dash back. Um, mm -hmm. So let's recompile. Oh, I mean, what did they expect? <laughs> of course, <laughs> so dumb. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna implement it later, of course. Um, uh, let's do ffmpeg 
uh, hpipe. So the buffer, we can just provide the data. So the number of bytes to write uh, size of u in 32t with height. So it, it's gonna tell me how many, how many things it's written, uh, but do I care? Can I just say no? Uh, and LP overlap, I don't know what the fuck is it. Like, why does it always have some weird additional parameters that usually I don't give a fuck about? Like overlapped excuse me like what is what is to overlap in here freaking windows i swear to god <laughs> um so let's read what the fuck is that a pointer to an overlapped structure is required if a file parameter was opened with flag overlapped otherwise this parameter can be null for <laughs> I, I really like how, like, Win API arguments, they initially usually make sense, and at some point, they stop making sense. It's just like, it's almost like random arguments. They do random things in, like, unrelated play. Like, what? I suppose I don't have to provide, so it can be null. So I, I don't even have to care what it is, right? So I can just say null. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so and here it's flipped so it's also implemented right so i'm gonna grab the flipped from linux implementation uh, i'm gonna grab the flipped from linux and in here is gonna be just write file hpipe so ffmpeg data though yeah so if, eh, it's it's not yeah it's, it's like this width size of and then uh, null. Uh, null. What was the? What was the other one before? Uh, number of bytes. Yeah. Okay. So that should be it. Uh, that should be it. Hopefully. Okay. So it doesn't compile. That's fine. Let's do int. Okay. The moment of truth. gonna fucking cry <laughs> eh? and it's stuck at least it is creating okay it can't really finish it can I just okay control C that's fine if we take a look at this thing and it doesn't play so it didn't finalize it unfortunately hmm so how do we stop when we stop yeah that makes sense we just wait until it finishes <gasps> you know what we have to do we have to close we need to close the pipe first to sort of the way it stops on linux by the way the, the way it stops on linux we first close the pipe which triggers ffmpeg to finish because the input the standard input has been closed um i wonder if we can just say close uh handle ffmpeg h pipe and then wait until ffmpeg finalizes everything all right so it's some sort of like protocol protocol we are in, uh, telling ffmpeg that we're done rendering by closing the standard input and this is how it knows and this is where it starts to finalize everything all right so um okay let's give it a try so it should render 10 second video hopefully closing the pipe should indicate that's not enough that's not enough mm -mm -mm. maybe you close the pipe differently maybe you do it differently so um Win API close child std in. All right. Maybe even something like pipe. Um, creating child process with directed input output. Yeah, so that's uh, a really well known thing. Create child process. Yeah, so create file pipe and stuff like that. So we're creating a file and we write to pipe. Okay, then we create the child process. 
So create the process. Uh -huh. Close the handle. Uh -huh. Write to pipe. Did you close the child? Okay. Did you close the child handle when created the process? It can be used after that. Wait for single object. Uh, I closed the H thread. This is because what that's what tutorial was telling me to do. Uh -huh. And also, maybe I should have closed the pipe. Yeah, so I created pipe read. Should I close pipe read as well? Mm -hmm. uh, you need to use flush first. So is it buffered? Uh, win API flush. Mm. Flush file buffers. I guess we can try to do that. Sure. Um, so this is ending. Okay. Flush file buffers. So it is buffered. Uh -huh. So then we close the handle. Uh, hopefully that triggers. Maybe we have to close both uh, like a read and write. Oh yeah, that's that's a good point actually. All right, so let's call this write and also keep track of read. I think that's going to be beneficial. So let's go to the compilation errors. Fuck. Wine server. Okay. That's the wrong one. Uh, all right, so h write uh, to the fair yeah each right is gonna be that and h read is gonna be that uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh yeah I, I named them differently <laughs> read right okay uh, so this one is right. Maybe one of the things I have to do, I have to close them. I, I keep screwing it up. I'm so sorry. This is because, again, because I'm tired. Right. Uh huh. What else? Uh, here we have to flush the right. And we're going to close the right, but also maybe we're going to close the read. Uh, right. So, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Because when we create the pipe, where do we create the pipe? So here is the uh, pipe read and write. And then at the end in here, we're just assigning them. Okay, so that's, that's fine. And it seems to be compiling. So let's give it a try. Uh-huh. So it is processing. That was not the case. It was not the case. It was not the case. One of the things we can do. Okay, so this is the last thing we can do. We can set the length of the video. Maybe we can indicate the end of the video through setting the length of the video so FFmpeg will stop um, after we like generated everything. So uh, FFmpeg set length. So this is the last thing I can think of. Uh, video duration in here. Uh, T duration. Okay, so transcoded video sequence, the duration specified in seconds. Okay, that's cool. So that means, um, yeah, it kind of sucks that we literally can't do the same trick as we use on Linux because on Linux it's super easy. You just close the pipe and it's, that's an indication of the end. Uh, but here we probably have to specify the length. And where do we specify the length? Probably for the input, right? So essentially we have to do T and we have to specify the seconds if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, so since the function does not accept the duration, we're going to hard code it. Um, so let me take a look at the row the row thing and the duration is 10 seconds so we can put 10 in here right uh, duration it is n seconds yeah so because you can accept the timestamp and everything so 
that should be fine and we have to be really precise in terms of the frames that we accept so um yeah let's give it a try so that's the last attempt that i'm gonna uh, make and that's the last hope to finally produce the the video mm -hmm. yeah i don't know uh so i'm gonna try to research that off screen uh right and see what's up with that and maybe i'm gonna put it in a footnote of the stream uh, i'm gonna put it in the footnote of the stream because yeah it's just like a very tedious process of just trying different things and there's probably some sort of a hack uh there's probably some sort of a hack uh that you just have to like you know put in there and it probably doesn't even make sense and it's probably based on some sort of like a weird you know compatibility shed or whatever right so it's not particularly important what's important is What's important is that we have a Windows, um, a Windows version of Visualizer, right? So um, we have built Visualizer like this. We don't even have that, but I mean, just a second. There we go. Right, and this is a Windows application. So it is possible. It is possible, and it was rather straightforward, right? So the only thing that is left is to just like figure out how to send information to ffmpeg but i mean we figured it out like we know we can send information to ffmpeg it's just like we don't really know how to finish it right so how to tell ffmpeg we're done we try to close this pipe but this is primarily because i don't know how pipe in windows work right i really don't know how they work so i'm gonna research that a little bit and i'm gonna just probably finish that offline uh, and then maybe concatenate with the main vod and then upload it to youtube right so we have like an actually working thing with within a single session all right that's it for today i guess that was interesting uh thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate that have a good one and i see you on the next recreational programming session with azozin so yeah love you Mwah. All right, this is the footnote of the session and I was reading through the official Microsoft article on how to create the child process and redirect input output. And I found a very interesting piece of information that actually helps with our problem. So essentially the end that you uh, leave in a parent, uh, you have to mark it as non-inheritable because apparently if you don't do that, it gets inherited by a child and because of that, it never gets closed or something. I, I do not fully understand what the hell is going on in here, but doing that actually helps and solves the problem. So let me demonstrate to you, right? Essentially, so let's take this thing and the end that we keep into ourselves to the parent and where we're writing so the child can receive it, we have to mark it as non-inheritable uh, or something. Like, is it like it, it's called inherit? So we're setting it to zero, so that means it's not inherited, I guess. Uh, right, so don't uh, inherit anything in here. And of course, it would be nice to maybe handle the error in here because it might happen. So let's say could not set handle information. Uh, let's capitalize everything properly. And yeah, that should be it. So let me try to recompile this entire thing. And now if I try to run the, the entire like rendering process, uh, it will render everything. And finishes. That, that's it. Th that was it. That was the entire problem. And if we take a look at the video, uh, it, it, it's perfectly. It, it works perfectly. If you don't set that thing, if you don't set that thing, it is not going to work. It's going to get stuck. So I kind of vaguely understand what is going on in here but but do but not fully right because it's some sort of like a, a windows specific thing that i'm as a linux developer not really aware of uh but i just accept it as it is right so you see we're not setting uh this non-inheritance flag and it just hangs so my hypothesis is that since the that end is inherited by child child is supposed to close it but since the child doesn't close it it's not really fully closed and it's just like i don't know what is going on Right. So the only thing I know is that if you just do that, it uh, works perfectly and it does exactly uh, what we want. Right. It finishes as soon as we finish sending frames and closing that specific pipe. And yeah, it works. Which means that we can just try to go ahead and instantly integrate uh, that Windows implementation of FFmpeg to Mutualizer. 
and have the video rendering in visualizer already on today's session so that sounds interesting that sounds cool actually let's, let's go ahead and do that so uh let's go i'm going to just go here and replace the ffmpeg windows with our new one uh, unfortunately the interface in visualizer is slightly different than in that example because we also accept a sound file path so i need to take that into account as well uh, right, so in the windows, we uh, have to accept, we have to accept that output thingy. Uh, right, and I suppose, suppose it's one of the inputs. So the first input in, in here is standard input. Uh, after that, another input is this one. And the question is where we have to do this. So I suppose it's at the end. Uh, source, sound, it's sound, a yeah, sound file path. So that's what's supposed to happen. Uh, and let's just go through the compilation errors. So we already have build sh that we can use. Um, okay, so build sh just uses these flags. So let me quickly remove them because, because it calls to Rayleap. My Rayleap environment is not properly set up. So let's just like disable that. Uh, okay, so let's go through the compilation errors. And used variable size. Uh, I wonder why is it complaining about that? I mean, yeah, so <laughs> apparently I never compiled this code with all the warnings turned on. So that's why it has all the warnings. Interesting. So here it's integer, but we know you, you cannot see Shice, by the way, right? So it's complaining that we're using uh, D on unsigned thingy. But if I don't do that, it's we, we can replace it with U. Oh, let's keep it D. Uh, let's keep it D. Okay, so everything seems to be fine. The only thing we're missing in here is the ffmpeg executable. So let me quickly bring the ffmpeg executable here. Uh, all right, so ffmpeg xc. All right, and the question is in the build sh where we're building it. We're building it into the build. Okay, so let me recompile everything one more time, just in case everything seems to be compiling. I'm super happy. Let's do build visualizer. Uh, XZ wine. All right, all right, all right. So let's go to PCMFM, PCMFM, uh, programming, uh, sorting, visualizer, music. I'm actually navigating the, the things blindly completely. <laughs> so, and let's take the short uh, thing and render it. Okay, is it actually sending shit to ffmpeg i feel like maybe it does it's it's really hard to tell if it's actually sending shit there okay so it started ffmpeg at least uh we can take a look at the uh maybe output okay so there is output but i can't see if it actually like creates anything you know the logging of rayleap is kind of yeah I wonder if I can disable logging. I should be able to disable logging, right? So um, I remember in Rayleap there was a way set trace log level, right? So you could do something like that. And visualizer src visualizer somewhere at the beginning. We're going to say okay, set log trace level, and there was like a level none log level, yeah, log none disable logging completely um, right it would be still nice to see the initialization of like window devices and stuff like that so maybe I'm gonna set it like after we initialized everything so yeah let's go ahead and do that so let's do the build and let's start the visualizer yeah that uh, thing that logs every time we get pixels from the texture is a bit annoying not gonna lie all right are we sending okay input file all right all right oh shit i see what is going on that's literally the thing that i was talking about you need to follow some sort of a syntax because the file name contains spaces you need to literally wrap it in uh, quotes like this is literally why on POSIX arguments are separated so you don't have to think about this kind of stuff. Windows people like what? 
Anyways, uh, whatever, uh, we can fix that, sure, not a big deal, not a big deal. So, um, where is the S? So, you just need to put, you know, quotes in here. Um, so, let's try to compile it one more time and uh, run it one more time, oh, of course. Uh, and uh, let's uh, go, a boom, a boom, we are rendering! we are rendering very freaking slowly very freaking slow look at that speed of rendering holy shit why is it so slow uh is that because it's like a full hd like on linux it is definitely way faster on linux it is definitely way faster um so i'm just thinking maybe i can try to reduce the resolution or maybe the bitrate or something like that or I can just like literally wait until the end and just cut to that. I don't know, I don't really want to cut anything. So let's try to reduce the, um, you know, the, it's, it's not even that big, honestly. It's not even that big. Okay, so let's do whatever quality will be decided by, um, by FFmpeg and let's reduce the resolution of this entire thing. So I think um, the resolution is in here. So let's make it 60 and the render FPS is going to be 30. So we're going to render that in a crappier, um, in a crappier quality, right? But this is going to be faster and it's going to be real time without like any special cuts, hopefully. Um, okay. So let me, let me see. So, all right. Uh, boom. Okay. Is it rendering fast? It's, Okay, so essentially it's, um, you cannot see this, but the speed is 0 0.5, that means instead of 30 seconds, it's going to take a minute, um, right, so it's going to actually take a minute, I don't know. But yeah, I, I hope that the slowness comes from the fact that it's, no? Is that it? So it's... End of file while reading input, terminating the mixer thread. End of file, huh? So, and it's finished. But it was not reporting appropriately. That is bizarre. Okay, so it generated some sort of output. It is correct though, but on the in the standard output it was reporting some strange stuff. Oh, okay. I see what is going on. So it, it literally rendered like 10 sec... Ah! 10 seconds! It's because of the 10 seconds we were trying to... to put in here. Okay. <laughs> Freaking 10 seconds, I swear to God. Uh, where are they? Yeah, okay. I, okay, I see. I see what is going on. Sure, sure. Uh, let's try to rebuild this entire thing and uh let me let me see let's try to run it one more time let's try to run it one more time <laughs> 10 seconds get them all right render so this time hopefully it will just like work properly oh is it what if it was working because of those 10 10 seconds all right whatever let's just wait so i hope that slowness uh is because maybe of wine implementation or something like that and actually on windows it is way faster i hope but who knows we'll see we'll see i'll definitely try to test these uh executable on windows as well just like a sanity check quick sanity check and maybe i'm gonna then upload it to github uh in releases right so you can download it and stuff like that unfortunately it's gonna be unsigned right because i don't know how to sign executables on windows I, I feel like it might actually cost money as well and i don't have any money so i don't know we'll see we'll see we'll see uh, maybe there is a free like options to just sign sign it up uh, okay so he's doing things all right so we're done cool uh, now let's take a look and see if it's full fully rendered. Uh, just a second. I think it's working, right? So, 
Yeah, we... It's, it's past 10 seconds, we fully rendered it, so we have fully ported Mutualize for Windows. And we did that completely on Linux. That is bizarre. The fact that they can just do that on Linux is kind of weird. But I still need to test it on, on, like on actual Windows, but still. All right, so I guess I proclaim today's session a success. We had a couple of roadblocks with, you know, pipes and stuff like that, but uh, we still overcame them. We still overcame them. Anyway, that's actually it for today. Thanks, everyone who's watching right now. Really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next recreational Azuzin session. I love you.